Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Continuing to take a look at some of the week two matchups. We're taking a look at a top 25 matchup as the Tennessee Volunteers go and face the Pitt Panthers. This is going to be an interesting game as it's kind of teams that like to do the opposite. Tennessee wants to run fast, load up possessions. Pitt, without Kenny Pickett, Pat Narduzzi back running the offense, wants to slow it down. This is going to be an interesting matchup before we get into it, though. I just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have shown the channel. Both the Tennessee Volunteer fans and the Pitt Panther fans have been absolutely awesome. Love chopping it up about ball with you guys in the comment section. Let us know down in the comments what your pick is. We're trying to make a little bit of money. Dill, I'm going to kick it off to you. What do you think about this matchup here? I'm so excited to see uh, my guy Hendon Hooker in a real game. Like I, He was playing Ball State. And he looked as good as I've ever seen him look or really – I mean, he looks as good as a college quarterback can really be. Like, the ball is jumping off his hand. He has great arm strength. He he obviously can fly. We all know that. And he just looks in full command of that offense, and I'm pumped to see him – what he can do against a very legitimate defense. The Tennessee offense, as Michigan fans, as as like Big Ten college football fans, we don't get to see that type of thing very often. There's something so pleasing about watching this Tennessee Volunteers offense. They use every inch and blade of grass on the field. They spread you out. And then when you have a guy like Hendon Hooker who can throw from either side of the hash to the boundary, has the arm to make any throw that Tennessee asks him to, you have, in my opinion, some really underrated wide receivers at Tennessee. It's just, it's magical. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you look, yeah, you lost Vellis Jones from last year, but Cedric Tillman, he's great. I think Hyatt is really, really good. Both the running backs can play, especially number two. He's great. In the offensive line, which has been a struggle at Tennessee for a very long time, I think that position group's getting it figured out. I mean, yes. they, they didn't give up anything against Ball State. And yeah, I get it was Ball State, but they didn't give an inch. So, I'm, I mean, the way this offense is kind of filling out and becoming really complete, along with being coached by a really smart guy in Josh Heifel, I think I just – I can't wait to see it. I, I really think this Tennessee team, the fact they came in on rank is preposterous. Yeah, I agree that they were definitely one of the more underrated teams. And I, even Vegas values them more than the eight people. I mean, they are going on the road to the top 17 ranked team in the country in their six and a half point favorites. They That's should not be. a bash on Pitt. That's just, I mean, Tennessee from a Vegas standpoint, from the number standpoint is a much better team than what the national media is giving them credit for. Yeah, and then that's that's the thing is can I mean can Pitt slow him down? Yes, Pitt has a great defensive line. We all know that. I'm not sure they have this skill on the rest of the field to really deal with Tennessee though, because you just like they're a different animal. I I, I just think it's going to be hard. You can't just rush the passer on Hendon Hooker because he can throw on the run. He can throw from wherever, and he himself runs it with the read option, so you can kind of pull defensive linemen out of the game with that too. So I just, I think this is a super hard matchup for Pitt, frankly. I do too. I think you mentioned the key to the game for Pitt. If we're looking at keys to the game, what does Pitt need to do to beat Tennessee? For one, they're at home. Bring a rowdy crowd. I think it will be rocking. It was definitely rocking for the backyard brawl on Thursday night. Second of all. That was because West Virginia fans. <laughs> West Virginia brought it. That, that was an electric game. I, I absolutely love those rivalry games. Anyways. Pitt needs to get after Hendon Hooker up front. I mean, if there is a weakness on Tennessee's offense, it probably still is the offensive line, although I do agree it is an improved group. Pitt has one of the best defense lines in the country. Although they didn't connect with too many sacks against JT Daniels, they looked dominant. Like, there was not many clean pockets to throw from. Baldonado, Kalaja Kanshi, Desmond Alexander, who I believe went down with an injury. I mean, a laundry list of guys who can get after the passer on Pitt's defensive line. That has to be one of the keys to the game if you want to knock off Tennessee. The second is, you know Pat Narduzzi is going to try to slow this down and turn it into more of a slugfest. Can Pitt control the time of possession? And that'll that'll probably be an issue for Tennessee because they really weren't a physical defense last year. Yes. So that probably is like like you need the ball. You need Hendon Hooker to have it, and and if Pitt can sap them of it – they did an okay job against West Virginia. I don't think they controlled the tempo like what I think Narduzzi would have wanted, frankly. But I think they were solid enough to, to obviously get the job done. So 
Yeah, Pitt's going to need to try to hammer it on him and really slow the game down. I'm not – I guess we're kind of still – we'll see what Tennessee is. Like, their defense was bad last year. I think it has some talent. I think you could it could look better. It looked fine against Ball State, but that they weren't going to get tested any anyway. So that'll probably be another – like, can yeah, can Pitt beat them up up front on defensive line? Can they slow the game down? That'll that's probably what, the only hope they have. And that, that's like the, – the key to the game is what team can play this – what team can play the style of game that they want to play? Can Pitt control the time possession? That's a big question. And then Tennessee, can you get off the field on third down and get the ball into Hendon Hooker's hands? If Hendon Hooker gets a lot of drives, he's going to put up points. I don't really care how good this Pitt defense is. They're going to score. Now what Pitt's going to try to do is limit the time possess- or limit the amount of times Hendon Hooker has the ball in his hand and just kind of sap that clock down. Now, this is partly the reason why I'm a little bit lower on Pitt. I don't love that idea. I don't love the idea of having to make a game ugly in order to win the game. And that's what Pat Narduzzi is easily trying to do. You look at what we saw at West Virginia. He came out with his first drive in an I formation. I mean, you never see that in college football anymore. That's what Pat Narduzzi is trying to do. You're going to see a lot of 12 personnel, two tight end sets. You're going to see fullbacks. Can Tennessee be physical up front? I think Pitt needs to ask Keaton Slovis to do more. When they asked him to throw the ball, I thought he was pretty solid against West Virginia. I mean, in, at, I I don't think it's going to be enough just to run the ball, smash my football, and beat Tennessee. I, I, kind of, I kind of agree. It's like even Michigan last year, like, yeah, they could run it. Like, obviously a great running team, but, like, they were able to – you can slow those type of teams down. You watch the Penn State game with a Michigan-type roster. You watch how Georgia was at, t- at times. Like, you can kind of slow a rushing team down if – if you yeah, you can make a couple negative plays, get a penalty, any any yeah. of those sorts of plays. I and I I think you're right. It's just like there's a reason everybody in the world plays the way Pitt played last year on offense, and that's because that's how you score points. You just don't score points running the I formation. And as good as their defense is, they're just not gonna get enough stops, in my opinion, against a guy of, of the Hendon Hooker ilk and the rest of the Tennessee offense to play the way Pat Narduzzi wants to play on offense. Yeah, Pitt, my problem with – I think Pitt can win this game if they can do what we talked about. The the What I'm questioning with Pitt is when you play that style, and this is kind of a season-long Pitt comment here, when you play that style, you just get into so many coin flip games where it comes down to one possession. You're not beating teams by multiple scores. You're not beating teams by double digits. You get yourself in enough of those games at West – like like you, like you looked against West Virginia – and it's hard to go 10-2. and two. It's hard to go 9-3 and three when you have so many games that are kind of coming down to the fourth quarter if you're not blowing the doors off teams like Pitt did last year. I think Pitt can win this game at home if they can establish the run. I actually don't think it's a horrible matchup. When you look at what Tennessee struggles with on offense, it's protecting him to hooker. You're going to look for Tennessee to get the ball out quick to their playmakers. Again, it is such an underrated like talent group around Hendon Hooker. I think Cedric Tillman is legit one of the best wide receivers in the country. Jalen Hyatt, Brew McCoy, you mentioned some really, really good running backs, I think headlined by Jabari Small. The question is, can Tennessee get off the field and can Tennessee get the ball out of Hendon Hooker's hands quick? Because the pass rush will win. That pass rush is coming. Can they get it to their playmakers and make some explosive plays? Dale, I'm going to open it up to you. Do you have a pick for the game? I mean, I... I just I couldn't t- I can't pick against Tennessee right now. I think the way that Hendon Hooker finished last year, I, the arm looks better, frankly. Which I mean, it is a test because he was he was slinging it last year too. I just don't see how Pitt's going to keep up with them. I think like I just don't think they're going to get enough stops. And I, I, as much as I, I do think Keaton Slovis looked pretty good against West Virginia, I think he could carry more weight. I, I just. I just I don't I see worry, them scoring. I worry if Pat Narduzzi is just not going to ask him to do it. That's the, the immediate thing we talked about when we recapped the backyard brawls. Pat Narduzzi needs to ask more Keaton Slovis. He is a plus quarterback, college level quarterback. And then I get he threw for 300 yards, but I think he only had what 24 passing attempts. Threw for 308 yards on 24 passing attempts. Pat Narduzzi wasn't asking him to do anything. This game, you're going to see Keaton Slovis is going to need to take some explosive plays. They have the playmakers to do it, like Jared Wayne, Mumfield coming over from Akron. Those guys can make plays downfield. They can make people miss, create explosive plays. Pat Narduzzi needs to open it up a little bit, I think, if Pitt wants to win this football game. I agree with you. I don't think it's enough. 
just to run the ball and try to just play keep away. That's what Notre Dame tried to do against Ohio State. It just doesn't work. you got to be able to score. You brought in Keaton Slovis for a reason. Let him cook a little bit. I'm probably also taking Tennessee to cover a touchdown. Again, when you're talking Tennessee, you're talking covering points. A touchdown is not that much. Tennessee is going to open it up. They're going to run fast. They're going to put up points. I'm taking Tennessee to cover six and a half. Yeah, because just a lot of the issues you'll see with Tennessee is, like, can they play defense at a really high level? I'm not sure you – I mean, West Virginia is no elite defense, and they did an okay job slowing Pitt down. I get the score was a little high, but, yeah, you had a defensive touchdown. You had a fair amount of turnovers out of the West Virginia team that pushed those – total at that score higher than I think I you had a 64 yard touchdown as well like there were some explosive plays that I mean <laughs> Pitt's offense was efficient but it wasn't necessarily like you weren't you didn't leave that game saying Pitt as a juggernaut offense like did no. last year and that's not how this Pitt offense is going to look and I'm okay with that but I'm also asking Pat Narduzzi to just just from an analytical standpoint like Running the football that much does not work. It's not going to be enough to beat Tennessee. But I'm, realistically, t- Tennessee beats West Virginia by like 20 points. I, I mean, they would really, I think, house West Virginia. Yes, but what, but Pitt, Pitt under this offense and what Pat Narduzzi wants to do is never going to beat a team by 21 points. Like if you ever see a Pitt spread, unless they're playing Duke in the ACC, over 21 and a half, take the team to cover because Pitt isn't going to blow out any yeah. teams this year yeah, yeah. if they play like they did against the backyard brawl. That'll do it for our game preview on Tennessee Pitt. Again, this one is going to be a great one just because the styles are polar opposite. Can Tennessee run and gun? Can Pitt control the clock? We'll see on Saturday. We appreciate you guys checking us out as usual, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.